Welcome to Dassault System 3D Experience Forum North America. I'm Daniel Newman, Principal Analyst at Futurum Research, and we are going to go fast in just a moment because we have a very exciting guest or two today. Gentlemen, Ed, Keith, welcome to the little conversation. Hi, Dan. How Thanks are you? for coming by. Hi, Dan. Formal handshake. I've done a few of these. No one shook my hand. I don't know if it was me, but I like that. I, that's a level of professionalism. Right. And I also, guys, I like to go fast. And the rumor that I heard before I got to interview is that I really don't know anything about going fast. I don't but know, you I heard guys. You ran 150 and something. He <laughs> was a closed circuit professional driver. Yes, that happened. You are right. But in, in, in reality, when we're talking about going on land at the speed of planes flying in the sky, few people have had that experience. And at the 3D Experience Forum, it's an interesting time to talk about it. So, so first, I guess quickly, just tell me real quick your roles and a little bit about your company. Mm -hmm. Well, Keith, you can go first. Well, I'm the uh, director of operations and co-owner of the North American Eagle team. And uh, Kind of what I do is kind of oversee all the operations, but really it's a partnership. Uh, no one sits around and says I'm the boss, but uh, we got a great team and uh, good people, and uh, we go. Well, yeah, and, and you know, Keith comes uh, to the uh, project as uh, not only co-owner but a wealth of experience from you know, like he was a senior manager at Boeing, and and he uh, has since retired from there. Uh, he owned KZ Trailer Sales. He used to run an alcohol uh, dragster. So he has a lot of racing background as well. Myself, I came from uh, 31 years with the IBM Corporation and a few other things after that. But my background is you know, kind of a combination of flying airplanes and, and racing cars through all of my years of, of building experience. And then eventually in the late 80s, I went to uh, going out to the Bonneville Salt Flats and uh, building and racing cars there. But in the 90s, that kind of led to us getting together and going after the British Empire by building a car to challenge their uh, record. They currently hold the record at 763 miles an hour. And so our mission is to, to take that record and bring it back to the North America. So for those people out there you know, watching this right now, mm -hmm. your company, North American Eagle, you're really in the business of trying to design, develop a vehicle, a land speed vehicle that goes faster than the, uh, what you call the British Empire, that's faster oh, yeah. than their, their current record? Supersonic. Yeah, it'll go supersonic. Uh, but to do that, we have to bring a, a great deal of technology uh, to focus on the project. And so that's why companies like Deso Systems and others that have contributed to you know their products and services to us really makes this happen. I mean, we're, you know, we're great innovators, uh, but we also know how to use the products that make us successful. You know, at the end of the day, we want to be able to go home and go skiing on the weekends and scuba dive and fly airplanes. So we want to do this safely. Yeah, that's that's very, very important. Now, i got to ask before I, I jump to the next question, but uh, Keith, have you ever driven the car? Ed's let me sit in it, and we towed it <laughs> behind a pickup truck. And You know, one time, actually, in 09, I brought my fire suit to the lake bed, and I was going to drive it, but we had another guy that we put in the car, and he went over a speed bump at about 200 miles an hour and we had to call it quits for that weekend. Yeah, he tore some panels so, off the bottom. But lately we've just been so busy when we're out at the lake that there's just no time to sit. But I hope eventually uh, I get to do that. Ed and I both, what we're going to do is after he sets the record, we're going to give everybody on a team to sit in the car and make a pass. Although there are some guys that said they wanted to do that, but now they've, they've, changed. They, yeah, they've already changed their idea. So. Yeah. I don't know that, you know, because what's, what's the fastest you've, you've gone? The fastest I've gone so far is 515. 515 mm -hmm. miles an hour. Yeah, yeah. And from a perspective, that's about the speed of cruising, uh, 737 cruises in the sky overhead? Uh, about approximately. 15 mile an hour slower, yeah. But you're, you're, you're doing it on the ground? Yeah. Yep. Which, yeah. Which is Big difference. The dynamic pressure of the air is a lot thicker on the ground than it is at 33,000 feet. Yeah, and that's why we need 42,500 horsepower to push the Just thing. Just push it through and the it, air. And needless to say, it's not very fuel efficient. In, the, <laughs> in afterburner, it burns about 160 gallons a minute. So it's, uh, 
but it's a typical fighter jet. I mean, it, we took a, a Mach 2 fighter that's capable of 1,600 miles an hour and turned into a car. So, so, so you guys took a plane, like a, an old fighter jet, yes. and instead of using what traditional people build cars with, you said, planes already go. Yeah. faster. We'll, we'll start there. I mean, where did that idea come from? Well, you know, we, we knew that, that we didn't have the capability and, and the resource to design the inlets and, and various things like that. We just didn't have that capability. So we said, well, you know, an F-104 Starfighter, which I knew about, you know, back when I was in the Air Force, I said, you know, that is a small, very fast fighter. And if we could just find ourselves an old junky one that we could afford, because a new one would cost a half a million on up, so we decided to go searching for this junkyard dog, which we did find. And we brought it home, uh, you know, for $25,000 and uh, the shipping cost. We brought the thing out to Spanaway, Washington, unloaded it. And, you know, of course, all our you know, wives and girlfriends and you know, relatives that came out to see this, they all looked at us like we were crazy. But Keith and I, we could see inside could see, of this. We had the vision yeah. to see beyond yeah. it. And so that's how we started. And it took us about four years to put some integrity back into the yeah. fuselage. There's a lot of uh, damage done to the fuselage. It looked like it had been rolled, rolled down a mountain. But that's what we needed to do to start with, just to get a platform. Then we had to get into the engineering of how to build a suspension and, and all the other things. We had to, to rebuild a junk engine and, and make it you know, viable. And then, then you start getting into all the extra things like how to steer it and, and you know, all the telemetry and the electronics and all that. So it became a more and more complex project the further we went. Uh, we might have been a little naive to start with, but at the same time we had a vision. And so we just knew we had to, to capitalize on that vision. At the very same time, we were attracting others like us. And so next thing you know, it's like uh, you know, ants coming to a, a, a to a, a big piece of ham. It's like, you know, so we got these guys and they're aerodynamicists and mechanical engineers and Physicists. aircraft mechanics and, you know, truck drivers and paramedics and so yeah. on. Guys that maybe in the service used to work on jet engines or whatever. And, you know, so those are the guys that started becoming attracted to the project. And so next thing you know, you have a viable team as well as a product that is now, you know, really has, has some validity to it. And so once we started into the testing phase, then we can start proving to ourselves that we were right. And so we think we're on the right track and, and we, we do see ourselves setting it. So I gotta record. ask you though, you said the British Empire, how fast? Well, they set a, a single engine record in 1983 at 633 miles an hour. And then in 97, they upped it, upped it to 763. 763, you guys are at running at 515. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but the only thing that limited us is we just haven't had a track that was long enough. Okay, so what kind of innovation, uh, what kind of uh, setup do you guys need to test this theory? Because right, that's the end for you, right? The the outcome is you want to beat that record. Correct. Mm -hmm. What what's the steps? What's the steps is going to the next to logical you? steps is of course we have to find a venue and and we're pretty close to having that venue nailed down a 15 mile long track in Nevada. Uh, and then there's, of course, all the logistics that, that go around a, a very complex project. But we have the team and we have all that kind of, you know, we've practiced it so many times. We've done 53 test runs over 12 different test sessions. And from that, we've been able to develop all the logistics that's required to make this happen. So it's just a matter of, of just continually moving ahead. And of course, I used to say, you know, well, we're successful because we're tenacious. But I've kind of gone beyond that. I, I figured now we're just plain damn stubborn, and yeah. we're not going to quit till we make it happen. So. Well, the vision is so great in our mind, there's nothing that's going to stop us. We're working right now with the Bureau of Land Management. They're doing a great job with us. As soon as we get those permits done, uh, I think we'll be ready in about maybe six weeks. Yeah. I'm not superstitious, otherwise they cross my fingers. But uh, we'll be running maybe late June, early February. So you guys believe come 2018, there's a chance that this record will be held by North American Eagle. We believe so. So everybody heard it here that the land speed record, by the way, check out landspeed.com, right? Landspeed.com. There you go. Yeah. Landspeed.com is where you can learn more about this. But yeah. gentlemen, this is a fascinating project and your story, it's uh, its compelling. I'm going to I'm gonna have to go find me a, a racetrack somewhere and, and just go a little faster because oh yeah, it can I, happen. I, you know, it's like I said, you can't pace, you can't get the smile. Someone that likes speed, you can't get the smile out their oh, face, right? Yeah, you know, the head's glued yeah. to the seat, and I can't even imagine it at 500. It's a, but it's a great thrill. That's what I said. That smile, it gets your locked car in there. Bring out to the lake bed. 
bring some cover off so you can help us, and we'll let you go as fast as you want. I'm in. You guys, I'm going to give you a card here. You call me, I'm coming. All right. So, gentlemen, uh, Keith and Ed, thank you guys so well, much for sharing your much. story about North it. American Thanks, Eagle. Fun. Yeah. It's been a great venue, and uh, Dasso does a good job for us. Thanks for being here. Yep. Thanks.